talk to God often. Even if you're not perfect, just talk to him every day. On the days that I feel like I'm not gonna make it, on the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%. It ain't about the money. I know a lot of very, very rich people that's miserable, not happy at all. I can bet you most of you are happier than most of the people I know. And I know some very, very wealthy people. And it, money don't make you happy. It helps you through a lot of situations. You know the only thing about money? Money takes all emergencies and turns them into mere inconveniences. That's what money does. Really, other than that, it, it's, it's a lot to come with money. People think when you get famous or rich that your problems is over. More money, more problems. But I'll tell you the truth right now. The problems I got right now, I take them. Because the problems I had when I was homeless, I don't want them. Money going to change your life a little bit, folks. All of you going to get more. But you got to ask for it. But if that's your desire to get more of it, you got to ask God for it. If you want to be happy or successful, you got to ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. You have not because you ask not. If you up your ask, he will up his gear. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. You don't need an education to be successful. I don't, I flunked out of school. What God has for you, quit tying it in education. People kill me. I know people got two degrees finna go back to school and get another. If you got two of them that ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? I know people that's mastered and PhD though, ain't even working. You don't need that. I'm telling you, man, your whole success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. That's your key, man. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just gotta quit tripping why you in the process? Because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're gonna see exactly why it went that way. And you're gonna be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why I lose my job? You ain't the only one unemployed. I want you to ponder these four questions. Here's the first one, and that's why. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why do it? Why learn it? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn? Share as much as you can share? Develop every skill you possibly can? See every human you possibly can? Go to every class you possibly can? Touch everybody you possibly can? Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. Work on your list of whys. One of the big thrusts for success is to come up with a strong enough why. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, 
If the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision we die, without a vision we perish, without a dream we're nothing. I'm asking you to sit down with your family and develop a dream strategy. I'm asking you to make a list of what, what you want. What kind of health do you want? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of income do you want? What kind of gifts do you wish to bestow? What kind of power would you like to have? What kind of influence would you like to have? I'm asking you to go home and work on the why. Spend some time as you fly over the clouds and over the ocean back to where you came from. I'm asking you to have a vision for the time you've reached home of why why you want this kind of income, why you want this kind of recognition and these kinds of skills. I'm asking you to develop your own list of why. Now here's number two. The first question to ponder when you go home is why. Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question. Why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? Why not see how many people you can reach? I want you to establish some of your goals. I want you to give thoughtful consideration to your goals. And why not? If we've got good health for many, why not the rest? If it's happened for you, why not others? And why not you? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now here's number three. Why not you? I wish I could say that to each of you individually, but it would take a couple of lifetimes to sit down and talk with each of you individually. But I would rather do that. I'd love to spend a couple of days with each of you personally, pour out my heart, my soul, what's going on in my head. What's going on with me? See if we couldn't connect and find something valuable. But time doesn't permit for us to have those intimate conversations, get to know each other that well. So I've got to do it from up here. But I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains. You can make decisions. You can study the plan. You can change your life. You can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? Through all the things I've gone through in my life and a lot of downs, how did I keep the faith? There was a couple of reasons. Number one, I know from living that if you quit whatever you're trying to accomplish, if you quit whatever you were trying to accomplish can never happen. There's not even a remote possibility. If you quit, there is no chance of it popping back up again, coming back later. Quitting is guaranteed failure. Now, when you're trying, you're going to fail. But quitting, just stopping, that was the number one thing I understood. And then number two, you have to make sure that your dreams, your aspirations and goals are so big that not accomplishing them is not an option. What is commitment? Commitment is the salesman who says, look here, I'm going to make a thousand dollars a day and I'm not going home. You can turn the lights out. The janitors could be here running the vacuum cleaner. I'm not leaving here till I do it. I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I had X number of TVs. I had a minimum amount that I knew I had to sell every day in order to provide for my mother who was ill at the time, who'd lost her job at the m, &M cafeteria because of arthritis. And I said, I'm going to go door to door, and sometimes I would not come home until one o'clock at night, knocking on people's door, people closing. What do you want? Would you like to buy a nice working month's television set, no money down? No. What about an Emerson TV? No. Thank you very much. Do you know anybody else that would be interested? No. Thank you very kindly. Knock on another, hello. 
Would you like to buy a nice working television set, no money down? No, get away from our door. Thank you very kindly. Do you know anybody else would be? Yeah, my cousin, he lives two doors down. Thank you very kindly. I tell him you sent me. When I had your cousin told me that you wanted to buy a television set, told me to come in and talk to you, got a special discount for you. Yes, come in, I'm interested. I would just keep right on. I would not go home until I did. It's an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that when we put ourselves in a situation well, we say we're going to do it. it. It puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you. When you have that kind of consciousness, see, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied because that is your commitment. You do not reap a harvest in the fall because we need it. You reap a harvest in the fall because we deserve it. Not necessarily from a moral standpoint. Of course, there are some moral laws as well, spiritual and moral laws. But just the basic laws that simply say, if you wish to reap, you must plant. So jot this down. Reaping is reserved for the planters. The reason they reap is because they deserve it. They're the planters. They deserve to. Pull yourself together and quit tripping cause you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. Everything is wrong. First of all, let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? I look back on my life at all that I've been through. So the stuff I'm currently going through, I have built up enough reservoir that living in the car taught me that this ain't it. So the things I'm going through now, I know this ain't it, that he gonna come get me in a minute. So all I gotta do is sit tight. I ain't in a bad place. Now I ain't where I wanna be, but the spot I'm in is better than where I was. I ain't homeless. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processes. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he gonna toughen you. If you gotta be more caring along the way, he gonna let you have some trials come your way that's gonna have to produce that in you. See, the route you on right now is the route you got to take. And it's very uniquely yours. This thing you're going through, this is just uniquely yours. You just got to understand, you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through it. Now, in the order that it's going to happen, it's just yours. You have not because you ask not. It simply say you have not because you ask not. But you don't ask because you ain't got that together. When you ask God for something, quit tripping. He got it from here. God can't give you what you want because you want to hold on to what you got. You all in the way. Now you telling him how to bless you. You can't tell God how to bless you. It's a simple process. The only reason I'm telling you this because this is how I made it. I just do me. I just, I'm just being me. I stay uniquely who I am because you are okay just the way you are because you, God made you uniquely who you are. He wanted you to be just like you are. See, God made us very different. This is a, this God we got, God is amazing. He created you so individually. Do you know that it's close to 8 billion people on earth now? Do you know that it's almost 8 billion people on the earth? Do you know how many billions of people have died? Do you know that if you dig up all them people that have died and all the people that are presently here and every last one of them that he gonna make in the future, not one of you have the same fingerprint. Who do that? Who could possibly be so precise in his infinite wisdom that he created you so unique that ain't no two people got the same fingerprint. That's crazy. That's real crazy.
think about the potential within you that's still untapped. Consider these two questions during your time of reflection. Number one, what could I have achieved in the past had I been more diligent? Could I have been more disciplined? Worked smarter instead of harder? Said no more often to social functions, to community commitments? What could I have achieved in the past had I tried a little differently? Only you can answer this question. It's very personal. So that's question number one. What could I have achieved in the past if I tried a little more diligently? Now here's number two. How can I achieve more in the future? Well, if you take some quality time to thoughtfully answer question number one, you'll probably have a clue as to what's needed in the future. Do you need to work more diligently? Do you need to be more disciplined? Do you need to work smarter instead of harder? Do you need to say no more often? Do you need to manage your time better? That's one of the keys to reflection. You can put down on paper what worked for you in the past and figure out ways to translate this information into the future. You can design your better future if you can learn from your past. You can face your future with more excitement, more anticipation, when you design a future worth getting excited about. You can see your future and have it pull you, but don't forget to appreciate yourself for what you have done so far, for what you have done today. Know that your appreciation of yourself and your achievements will continue to fuel the fire of ambition. Self-appreciation is an integral part of success. You must develop a strong appreciation for your own style, your own methods, your own process. Take a self-appreciation inventory. Ask yourself a few questions. Start with number one. What have I achieved in the last four days, the last two weeks? the last six months, the last year, the last 10 years. What have I achieved during these time periods? Write it down. Take a self-appreciation inventory of all you've done and all you've accomplished and all you've become. Take inventory of yourself. Now compare this list to your goals. Have you accomplished all you set out to do in the last four days, two weeks, six months, one year, 10 years? compare your list. Maybe you've been so busy trying to reach your goals that you haven't taken the time to sit back and reflect on where you've really been. Look back at your list and say, wow, I really have been through a lot. I really have learned a lot. Look what I've done. Look what I've become. I wasn't like this 10 years ago or even one year ago. Look at me. I'm doing okay. Building your ambition takes little steps. One step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time. And it's like taking your family to a reunion where people haven't seen your kids for six months or even a year. They say, my, look how you've grown. Well, you know your kids have grown, but when you see them every day, it's hard to notice. So write down all your accomplishments and see where you've been and what you've done and who you've become. You'll say, oh, look how I've grown. And that's step one in taking a self-appreciation inventory. Now here's step two. What could I have achieved that I didn't? Be honest now, this is your inventory. Nobody else has to see it. What could you have achieved over the last week, the last month, the last quarter, the last year? What could you have achieved that you didn't? Would a game plan have made a difference? Would your direction have made a difference? Would greater preparation have made a difference? Would more discipline have made a difference? In how you changed your habits, changed your life, would time management have made a difference? Major time over minor time. Ask yourself, what could I have achieved that I didn't? Now take this one step further with number three. What do I want to achieve in the next four days, the next two weeks, the next six months, over the next year, over the next 10 years? What do I want to achieve? 
Well, all this falls in line with your goals. What you could achieve has to fall in line with what you want to achieve. What you could do has to line up with what you want to do. And what you could become has to meet what do I want to become. Everything affects everything. And through the proper disciplines practiced every day, every day, every day, through the proper disciplines, the what could I do has to match up with what do I want to do. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you're unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all times. And he says, well, you just mentioned the successes. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots. Do one thing each day that scares you. And that's not the same as the zero that you assume that you're starting with, right? Because to not make a decision also has a cost. And sometimes the cost of not making a decision is far worse than the cost of making a decision, even if the decision is risky. And I start thinking about my own life and how much time I had left to do the things that I would like to do. And at that time, I wasn't sure what my life purpose was, what my life's work was. When a door gets shut, all you gotta do is walk up the hall. It's more dope. And let me tell you about some of the other enemies we face, enemies on the inside. One of the enemies that you've got to destroy before it destroys you is indifference. What a tragic disease, drifting, drifting away from your ambition. How about, no, not just because a higher good would be obtained if I avoided it, but because a terrible catastrophe would be averted if I didn't. And so, well, so you want to get your fear behind you, right? You want to get it behind you where it's pushing you forward instead of in front of you where it's stopping you. We are just one little molecule that is added to the equation, but you, are the ones, you are the ones that is making it big. So you gotta say, okay, what's the price if I just stay doing this? What's the price? What, I need really to get scared if I learn all this and I don't fall through. And then that fear will get you over your fear. It'll push you through, turn fear on itself. I live by that. Like I let myself sort of feel the pain and the difficulty of, of being not where I wanna be in whatever that area, whether it's my spirituality, my relationships, my money, I let myself feel that pain because as you know, there's two motivators, right? There's the gaining of pleasure, right? Wanting to go get something, chasing the dream, but then there's the avoidance of pain. But you can't let doubt take over. Doubt the past and doubt the future and doubt each other and doubt the government and doubt the possibilities and doubt the opportunities. I just want to, for a moment, I want us to be okay talking about fear because when we talk about it, we can disseminate it, we can minimize it into the nothingness that it always was. But first we have to be willing to step into it. The day that you start living your life according to everybody else's opinion is the beginning of the end. Most of y'all don't actually know your self-worth. You don't know your self-value. So you're like a vulnerable little child. You're shaking and it's like, everybody loves me this week. So I love me this week. Next week, it drops. So now you're running around insecure and not loving yourself, sad and depressed based on the feedback, the responses, and the energy that the rest of the world is giving you. But have you ever considered the reason why you're going in circles is because you never stop to consider, have I ever checked my circle? Someone say, check your circle. I love me. So the day that you decide to stop loving me, I'm not gonna love myself any less. I believe in me. If you stop believing in me, I'm not going to believe in myself any less. If you believe that I'm irrelevant, because you think or believe that about me, it doesn't mean that I'm going to believe it about myself. A person of character 
doesn't care if you discover their private life. If you are afraid that I might find out about your private life, you have no character. You are a character. The day that you allow the opinions of the outside world to dictate the way you feel about yourself, it is the beginning of the end of you living a blessed and self-loving, secure life. Friend, listen to me loud and clear. Do not pick your friends that are enabling you. Pick some friends who empower you. Love yourself. Believe in yourself. Independent of the validation of the world. Have opinions and feelings about yourself. Independent of the feedback. Why you got to have somebody calling you beautiful every day in order for you to feel beautiful? Do you believe that you're beautiful? Or do you only believe you're beautiful when other people say that you're beautiful? Self-love is the cure to self-hate. A truly courageous person is not afraid of what might or might not happen next week or next year. He fears not making the most of every moment today. A truly courageous person fears making appearances more important than realities, making impressions more important than communication. Think about something that you'd like to have or something you'd like to create for you or your family. I want you to hold this thought in mind. Now, one of the first things I wanted you to do is don't worry about the inner conversation that you're going to have. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. That's going to come. You're going to develop a plan of action. You will find the way. You'll become the kind of person that can attract the people, the resources, in order to make that become reality. The discipline can seem like it's your worst enemy, but the reality is discipline is your best friend and it'll put you on that path the path to strength and intelligence and happiness what is the vision for your life what are the ideas and the dreams for your life who are you what are your gifts and talents what is your ultimate destiny and your goals god will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have Negativity, you can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. The way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Passion gives us a great amount of energy. And when we have that passion, there's something about how we love what we're doing and we enjoy what we're doing. And passion energizes us. It's possible to be passionate about something that you're not gifted in. Hello? Let me explain. Have you ever watched the tryouts at an American Idol? We can see that most people aren't as successful as they wish they were. Do you see there's a connection between these two very common phenomena? I hope you'll understand that it's in your best interests to take responsibility for everything you do. You spend your life performing for a crowd, it'll kill you. And you're like, I'm good. I'm not a singer. I don't perform for people. It's gotten much deeper than that now. It's the feeling that we get when we start offering ourselves up in a form that is more impressive to people, but is not authentic to us. See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go. You're in a dead end position. It erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding. Don't be so obsessed with them. Be obsessed with your own reality TV program called Your Own Life, right? How about the news? All the time they're trying to distract us. I'm not saying don't know about them, but it's such a convenient escape from the work. What it takes to win is not worrying about all that stuff. That should be the background noise. How do we increase our self-esteem? You have to begin to fortify yourself. I believe that you have to begin to consciously monitor your inner conversation and start talking to yourself. Start building yourself up. Sometimes the only good things you will hear about you are the things that you say to you.
It's something in me that says, I need to do this. So that's the first voice. But we've trained ourselves to ignore this voice and listen to the second voice that I believe is a collection of the average society. It's what we learned. It's the practical voice, the should voice. Whenever you say I should do, where are you getting that from? What society says. But we forget society's kind of crazy. It's like, why are we using them as the, the bellwether that we should get our advice from, right? 52 is the age at which a man's philosophy is fully formed. But it's okay to run a little behind schedule as long as you recognize it and do something about it. And you don't need volumes of books or the library in order to create a personal philosophy. You can do that anywhere. You can do it right here. So this first voice goes, I think we should do this. And we go right to this voice that says why we shouldn't. So for instance, there's many people that feel guilty about something. If you actually go to your heart, you can understand at a true level why you could have done something like that. Everyone can. But what causes our pain is trying to get society to understand why we did something. But the collective society isn't at a consciousness where they've forgiven themselves for anything. So there's a lot of judgment you'll look at in yourself if you look at yourself through society's eyes. Success is not in short supply. It isn't rationed. And you stepped up to the window and it was all gone. No, no, no. It's like an ocean here. Now, if that's true, what's the problem? Well, some people go to the ocean with a teaspoon. Have you got the picture? See, what you want to do in view of the size of the ocean is trade your teaspoon for at least a bucket and you'll look better down at the ocean. Kids won't make fun of you, right? Okay. Now there's two ways to ask and we'll wrap up goal setting, two ways. Here's number one, ask with intelligence. It didn't say ask intelligently, but I'm sure it meant that. Don't mumble. You don't get anything by mumbling. Be clear, be specific. Intelligent asking means how wide, how high, how soon, when, what size, what color, how much. Define what you want and describe what you want. That's powerful. In the weekend seminar we teach, goals become like a magnet. They pull you that direction. And the better you describe them, the more they pull. So ask intelligently. Here's number two. Ask with faith. That's the childish part of the equation. Believe you can get what you want like a child. Not an adult. Adults are too skeptical. So the formula really reads, make plans like an adult and believe in them like a child. And the most incredible things will happen. Just try it for 90 days. Just try it. You can always go back to the old ways. Just try it, just 90 days, 90 days. Now here's the last qualifying phrase on goal setting, as we promised to qualify everything. And it simply goes like this. Remember, you won't get everything you want. And we've already studied the reason for that. Simply, sometimes it hails on your crop and rains on your parade. It's that kind of planet. So you won't get everything you want, but if you will work this goal-setting formula, you can get plenty for wealth and happiness. Now let me give you a little simple formula for goal-setting, okay? We take two, two and a half hours on the weekend for the whole 10-year plan. We don't have time for that tonight, but let me get you started with a little simple formula Mr. Shof gave me, and maybe this will be helpful. First of all, I've divided goals into two parts. First is long range. Long range goals, that's your dreams. Your dreams for the next three, five, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, actually the rest of your life. Your dreams, you've got to keep dreaming. 
Ronald Reagan, president, said to the joint session of Congress a few weeks ago, the republic is a dream. And if we don't keep dreaming, we will lose the republic. Your better future is a dream for yourself and for your family. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream dreams. There's a Bible phrase that says, without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. The truth will set you free. The truth will stand and the truth will deliver you from procrastination and laziness and the downward spiral that comes with a lack of discipline. Character is the dedication to a set of standards. What are your standards that you've set for your life? I will never violate my standards. You got to say that every day. I do not tell lies. That's a standard. So don't believe the lies. Believe the truth. And the truth is you have time. You have the skill. You have the knowledge and the discipline to get it done. Yet in life, outside of that one area, most of us are worried about suffering. We're afraid of it. it. When we're suffering and sacrificing, we wonder whether it's worth it. We wonder whether we're supposed to. We wonder whether sacrifice or setbacks or suffering is a sign it's not our real dream, don't we? If you really want to develop the power of positive thinking as a habit, as a lifestyle, as a strategy for success, then decide right now to find something to appreciate from any seemingly negative person or situation and develop the habit of giving compliments. See, at the gym, you'd never think, oh, I'm going through some pain and discomfort. This must be a sign I shouldn't be at the gym. You'd never think that. It goes with the territory. Everyone knows this. Build a bicep or a tricep or a chest or legs. You have to break it down, suffer and sacrifice for it to grow. The indication of the pain and sacrifice and sweat, don't you feel better at the gym? So in that area, we all know to the extent we suffer and sacrifice is to the extent we grow. And your body is a metaphor for the rest of your life. See, if you really want to have some more positive feelings in your life, you got to keep focusing on what's right. you got to get curious. And most importantly, you got to find something to appreciate even in the tough times. Because in reality, as we've talked about so often before, the toughest times in your life sometimes provide you with the real resources to change your life. That peace that we're after lies somewhere beyond personality, beyond the perception of others, beyond invention and disguise. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. What's the one thing that keeps you from becoming who God made you to be? What's the one thing that keeps you from using your shape? Write it down, fear. That's the word, it's fear. It scares you to become somebody that you, other people may not understand. Risk being seen in all of your glory. Our eyes are not viewers, they're also projectors that are running a second story over the picture that we see in front of us all the time. Fear is writing that script and the working title is, I'll never be enough. And when I say, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, self-love is the cure to self-hate. These are the type of qualities that I'm going and have been instilling in my daughter. Nobody wants to be alone, but if you show up empty as an empty shell and you're expecting this man to fulfill you, because as soon as he leaves, you're depleted, you're empty, and you have nothing left for yourself again. Never rely or depend on anybody to fulfill your heart. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dreams for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love and enterprise and travel and doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dreams. Do some dreaming. That's long range goals. You got to have those. So that's number one. Here's the second part of goals, short range. Short range goals, that's your goals for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, the immediate future. We call these confidence builders. 
Because if you set up something short range, go for it, get it, latch, latch onto it, work hard, accomplish it. That starts building your strong feelings to go for your dreams. Now I've divided goals into three categories. Here they are. Number one is economic. That's your goals for money, income, business, profits, production. Economics, make sure you've got your economics well planned. Economics plays a major role in everybody's life. Economics is major, which means it ought to be meticulously well planned for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. What if you ask somebody tomorrow if you could see their meticulously well planned list of economic goals? What would they probably say? They say, you some kind of a nut? You must be weird. Hey, I found out what success is. Success is doing what the failures won't do. Make sure you've got your economics well planned. It'll put you in the top 5%. One of the key little subjects we talk about on the weekend is the seven fundamentals for wealth and happiness. And that's one of them, well-planned economics. It's a fundamental if you want to do well. Join the top 5%. Anybody in this room can join the top 5%, if you will. Now here's the second category of goals, things. Make a list of the things you want. And on my list of things, now I put everything. Little things as well as major things. Doesn't matter how small it is, it goes on my list. I used to just put major things, cars, homes. I don't do that anymore. I now load my list with everything, everything. And the reason is part of the fun of having a list is checking it off. That's it. Boy, at the end of the day, if you can go, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, whatever it is, right? You get into the habit. So load up your list, the things you want. Now, when you check off something major, Celebrate. That's an important point to me. Celebrate your achievements. Live it up. Have a party. When you reach something you've worked for for a while. See, we all grow from two experiences. One is called the pain of losing. The other one is called the joy of winning. We need both of them. Amplify them as much as you can, which also means Make losing painful. If you set up something, fooled around, didn't get it, put it on yourself. On the other side, if you did get it, congratulate yourself. Self-congratulations is a sign of maturity. Seeking congratulations is a sign of immaturity. But hey, winning and losing, see, that's what it's all about. That's the name of the game. Now, some people lead such mediocre lives at the end of the day, they don't know whether they're winning or losing. They got no clue. Guy's just going through the day with his fingers crossed. There's a better way. Okay, here's the third category of goals, personal development. Put those goals together, personal development goals. That's your goals to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, learn a language, all kinds of skills. The whole weekend seminar was designed to improve all your skills so that you walk away more skillful. And that's what you want, the personal development skills. That's what attracts, that's what brings good things to your life, the person you become more skillful. Now, this is quite a package to work on. Economics, things, personal development. For tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. Okay, that'll get you started. Now, here's the simple formula for setting goals. It goes like this. A, work on your goals. That's step one, work on them. And I put the word work there deliberately. Setting goals is plain hard work. I don't want to kid you. We haven't come here tonight to kid each other. It's work, I know it's work. That's why a lot of people just let it slide. It's work. Many people work hard on their job, but they don't work hard on their future. They just let that slide. And the work involved is making plans. 
I know most people don't. I understand that, but don't let that be you. Guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night, plan, plan, plan. And the guys be high. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you've got to be better than sincere, working hard. You've got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good planner. Somebody once wisely said, the people who fail to plan are planning to fail. Well said. So work on your goals. Here's step two, write your goals down. That's so important. I teach my staff around the world, put your goals in your journal. Because one of the major people you want to study is yourself. So here's the list of goals I put together three weeks ago. Here's the list of goals I put together two years ago. Here's some of the changes I made, rearrangement of my priorities. I scratched these off, I put these on, I've gotten these. Study your accomplishments, study what your desires are. Put them on paper, write them down. Here's another reason for writing your goals down. It shows you're serious about doing better. And to do better, you gotta get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.